Chapter 9, Mishnah 3. Having discussed in Mishnahs 1 and 2 the Yibam status of women who are biblically forbidden to their husbands or Yavams, our Mishnah discusses the status of women who are forbidden rabbinically. Regarding secondary Iraios who are forbidden by decree of the rabbis, if a woman is a secondary erva to the husband but not to the Yavam, then she is forbidden to the husband but permitted to the Yavam. Although the first marriage was forbidden rabbinically, it was binding, and so she may be taken in Yibum. If a woman is a secondary erva to the Yavam, but not to the husband, then she is forbidden to the Yavam, but permitted to the husband. Although, under biblical law, she is a full-fledged Yavama, the rabbis prohibited the Yavam to perform Yibum with her. If a woman is a secondary erva to both the husband and the Yavam, then she is forbidden rabbinically to both. She may not marry either brother. And if she did marry one of them, and he dies without children, she may not be taken in Yibum by the other brother. If a man married a secondary erva in violation of the rabbinic prohibition, even though the marriage is valid, the rabbis penalized her by depriving her of certain benefits. She, the secondary erva, receives from her husband neither the payment of her kasuba, or, nor does she receive payment for the produce of her property that her husband has used, nor does she receive food from her husband, nor does she receive payment for the loss of value of her worn-out property. However, even though their marriage is forbidden, the secondary erva's child is legitimate. Unlike the case of a biblically forbidden erva, the children is not considered a mom's heir, and may marry any legitimate Jew, even a Kohen, and we force the husband to divorce her. Marriage with a woman forbidden biblically is treated less severely. A widow married to a Kohen Gadol, a divorcee or a Halutza married to an ordinary Kohen, a Mamzeris or a Nesina married to a legitimate Israel, or a daughter of Israel married to a Nasin or a Mamzer, even though all these marriages are forbidden biblically, each of these women receives her kasuba, as well as the other benefits merit mentioned above, payment for produce, food, and worn out property. Since these women are biblically forbidden, the rabbis were not concerned that people might start violating these marriage prohibitions. A secondary erva, however, is forbidden only rabbinically. Since people do not treat rabbinic law as serious as they should, the rabbis felt the need to reinforce their prohibition by penalizing any women who violated it.